What's going on y'all, Tech Me Out here, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about the features of iOS 14 that Apple did not at their keynote, and also a few of the ones in which they did. So something that's different with iOS 14 is a new interface when you're editing a photo for contact. So you'll notice within here, we have some suggestions. You can access your gallery by tapping this icon right here, or you can tap the smiley face to add an emoji as the contact photo, or you can hit the little pencil there and then type in some letters here. You can still only type up to two letters. You also still have your add emoji options, but now you have a new section called more. This is gonna give you like some predefined emojis to use instead. I like this because I don't have photos for every contact and I don't always wanna see text. So to be able to kind of get an image of some form without having to find one per se, is nice. Okay, another new hidden feature, which is one that I absolutely love, is the fact that you can search for emojis within your keyboard. I don't care how many times I use an emoji, I can never find them when I need them. Now I can just type in what I want. If I wanna type heart, all of the emojis with hearts pop up here. Now this third feature is another one of my favorites and it's the ability to hide apps. So you can long press on the app and then you can choose um, remove app right here and then you can select add to library. When you hit that, it then hides the app, but you can find it within your app library. So after playing with this a bit, to me, it kinda is like Android's app drawer because you can basically access it to get to all of your apps and only have your essential apps on your home screen. The look in which you see is the look in which you get, so you can't really customize that at all. But you can tap on an app to access it, or if you see a folder in here, you can tap on that and it'll open the folder for you. The hiding app feature is super clutch because I know for a fact I have a ton of apps on my phone that you know I don't use a lot but I don't wanna delete. So to be able to kinda get them out of the way so that I don't see them all the time, yeah, that's gonna be nice. Now while we're talking about hiding apps, you can go into your settings and select home screen. And you'll notice within here that when you download apps, you can choose if it gets automatically added to your home screen or automatically added to your app library only. Now, if you're interested in learning like all of the features in which they announced, I actually did a video on that and I'll just annotate it somewhere up in here and link it down below in the description box. So this is a conversation I have going on with my family. I can double tap to reply or either long press on a message to reply. And once I do that, it's gonna take me to, it's kind of like own individual conversation within the conversation so that all replies can be seen in here. I just had a new message come into my group chat and I love the fact that I can see whoever responded last and their message right here within my pinned contact. All right, let's see what this Apple CarPlay is looking like. We got the new wallpaper action here. So yeah, everything looks pretty much the same. Settings, wallpaper for sure was not. So it looks like you can't set your own custom image, but these are the wallpapers you have to choose from. I do like, I like this red one right here. So I'm hit set and then head back and boom. Moving on to Siri. So Siri will silently answer questions when your phone's muted and she'll verbally respond either when you say, hey Siri, or if you have your ringer on. So right now my ringer is on. What's the weather in New York? It's currently clear and 84 degrees in New York, New York. All right, so now I'm going to mute it. What's the weather in New York? Oh, and we have um, a face mask within Memoji. I know that, you know, Apple mentioned that there are gonna be some new customization features, but that is one very distinct one. All right, now we're gonna FaceTime Cam and see if there's any FaceTime changes. So. There we go, I finna say. Cam, Cam, where you at, Shug? So let's check out what FaceTime looks like now. So the interface looks the same right in here. Now the thing that is different with FaceTime is the fact that when you swipe up now, it no longer pauses the videos. This is either a good thing or a bad thing. So I can actually just hop into any app and you know use it as normal while still having my FaceTime video in the top corner. So Cam, can you still see me? Yes, I can still see you. How many fingers am I holding up? <gasps> All right, okay. Another feature of iOS 14 is the ability to see a visual indicator when your mic or your camera is being used, just to show the visual indicator for audio. 
It's green when your camera's being used. Another new privacy feature is the option to actually select specific photos. So for instance, you know how you go to Instagram, you wanna add a photo you know, to your story. Normally you have to enable photo access and then you have to choose all photos in order to see any of your photos. But now you can just choose selected photos and choose which specific photos that you want to access in that moment in that app. I like that just in case it's an app you don't use all the time or maybe it's an app you're a little leery about and you don't want it to have access to your entire gallery and just instead that one photo you can do that. Because that's your business. Another little privacy thing that you can do is actually within Siri and search, you can come in here and turn off suggestions when sharing. So you know normally when you hit the share button to share a link or something like that, it pulls up who it thinks you might want to send that to. But now you can turn that off and make it back how it used to be. All right, now let's talk about these widgets. I was really curious what this is gonna look like and basically how you access it is you long press on your home screen you hit the plus symbol here, and then you can choose which widgets that you want to add. It's only Apple's apps that are widgets, but I really am excited to see what third-party apps will do. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna tap on the widget in which you want. You're given a series of options. You can hit add widget, and now it's on your home screen. Now you cannot resize this. You cannot put it just anywhere on your screen. Control Center is also a little bit different because you'll notice within here that it gives us some recommendations of accessories in which it feels that we that we might want to use or scenes in which we might want to use. But if you long press on your home app, it's gonna let you access your favorite accessories or you can choose a scene in which you want from the top here. Now, while we're in here in Control Center, you do have two new options. One is sleep mode. Next one here to the right of it, sound recognition. That is gonna listen for certain sounds so that you can get a notification on your phone when it hears those sounds. Now it currently isn't working because I did test it out. Now picture in picture, it can only rest in one of the four corners, like it can't sit in the middle of the screen or anything like that. You can make it bigger by, you know, doing the little pinch to zoom action, but this is as big as it'll get and this is as small as it'll get. I don't know if it'll work for YouTube. I don't have, you know, YouTube premium, so I haven't been able to test that out. And if I want, I can even swipe it off screen and just hear the audio without seeing the video. Voice memos, that also got a new um, feature in here where you can actually have folders to categorize your voice memos. Now when we hop into reminders, you can actually add a new reminder from your main screen without having to actually be within your list. And when you're looking at a list, if you happen to get to that little info pane for that specific item, you'll notice that the interface in here is a little bit different as well, which I like because it makes the interface look a little bit more clean. Also, when you go to access the menu for a specific list, that is a little bit different too. And then moving to photos, when you tap on the little search option here, you have new categories. So you have your moments, people, which has been there, places, categories, so that you can look at, you know, different themed pictures and such. Now I did ask you all on Instagram if there was anything in specific that you wanted to know about iOS 14. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, I'm gonna throw my handle up here, right there. But I uh, feel free to drop additional questions down below that you might have. So Liffle Floyd wants to know, can you change fonts? yet probably not use right no nah, you cannot change font still so maybe ios 15 16 17. troy boney says i want to know why all their new features are features that have been on android for years i will say um something that i do like with apple although they're sometimes late to the game they bring the features polished. It doesn't excuse the fact though that we had to wait this long for some of these features. So I did see some questions in here um, regarding how stable is it and would I put it on my daily driver. Honestly, I do not have this on my daily driver right now. Um, in the time that I've used it, I haven't had any crashes or things like that, but I still would hang off on putting, putting it on your daily driver because and using beta software, I have had instances sometimes where it does the boot loop. I've had scenarios where apps crash. You don't want it to be crashing out on you at random when you don't have to. I will hold off on putting it on your daily driver. But if you got to. And um, I think my homeboy C Kid, uh, with C Kid Tech, I think he did a video on how to get iOS 14 beta. So I'll drop that link to his video down below in the description box. Check this. So I can actually double tap the back of my phone and it'll take a screenshot. Or I can be like somewhere on Safari and triple tap and it will scroll down. So this is actually a new feature that has came within your accessibility settings. Navigate down to touch and then you can choose back tap. 
And this is gonna let you choose a custom action for double tap and a custom action for triple tap. So these are some of the options in which you have. I will say though, in using especially that double tap for a screenshot, I found myself accidentally taking screenshots to the point that I will probably turn it off. So. That's pretty much everything for this video. Now, if you wanna know some more of the hidden features, definitely hit the like button down below so that I can make sure I put some energy and time into doing that. That's gonna sum it up for this one. As always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.